Hello everyone and welcome to the first in our video series on how to play the Pokemon trading card game. My name is Professor Aaron and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need in order to get started. The first thing you need to get started playing the Pokemon trading card game is a Pokemon deck. A Pokemon deck consists of exactly 60 cards. It must include at least one basic Pokemon and can have no more than four cards named exactly the same name. And we'll get into identifying a basic Pokemon as well as naming conventions in a later video. The next thing you need is some way to identify damage or a damage counter. The easiest damage counter is using dice. You place these on the Pokemon when your Pokemon is damaged and that signifies how much damage it has. The next thing you're going to need is a coin, something to flip heads or tails with. It doesn't have to be a Pokemon coin. You can use any coin as long as it has a very distinctive heads and tails side. The next thing you're going to need are some kind of burn and poison counters. Again, burn and poison counters don't have to be official burn and poison markers. They just need to be able to signify that your Pokemon has been burned or poisoned. And the last thing you need is if you are using GX Pokemon, you need a GX marker. A GX marker has GX on one side and not on the other, and you use this to signify when you've used your GX attack for the game. And again, this doesn't have to be an official marker. This can be anything as long as it clearly states on one side that it's a GX marker and can be flipped over. Now, all of these things can be purchased together as a single kit called a theme deck. And if you stop in your local hobby store, comic book store, game store, um, ask the person behind the counter for a theme deck, they will give you a box and it has 60 cards and damage counters, a coin, a, pern a burn and poison counter, and a GX marker if the deck needs it. So it's a great way to get started. But as you're playing, and as you get to playing more and more, there might be some other things that you really should have, especially as you start going to play with your friends, or go out to a Pokemon League, or even to a Pokemon tournament. The first of those things that you really should have are sleeves. And these are little plastic sleeves that you can take your Pokemon cards and place them inside and it protects your Pokemon card and keeps all the backs looking exactly the same. Now a quick note about sleeves or anything else that could potentially have graphics on it when it comes to the Pokemon trading card game. Please be mindful that there could be and usually are little kids that are playing this so make sure that your graphics if you have any on your playmat or on your sleeves or on anything else that you have even your your clothing is considered appropriate for children. If it's not appropriate, you can be asked to leave. The next thing that you really should have is a deck box. A deck box is basically just that. It's a box that holds your deck of Pokemon cards. They come in all different shapes and all different styles. I prefer this style because in addition to the Pokemon deck, it has a nice little tray that has my coin and my dice and everything in there all ready to go so I can just take this and be ready to go. Speaking of dice, when bringing dice you want to make sure you bring a lot of dice. Pokemon can have 300 or more HP which means you could be using four or five even six dice to show how much damage is on that so you want to make sure that you have enough for all of your Pokemon should they be damaged. Another special kind of dice that you can have and you will likely see is what's called a rolling dice. A rolling dice is a special dice that's used to or used in place of a coin. So it's used to flip heads or tails, but you roll instead. So what you do is to signify heads would be the even numbers and the odd numbers are considered tails. This is a really really common practice especially at Pokemon League or tournaments and things of that nature. The next thing you really should have is some way to transport your stuff back and forth to keep it safe. My favorite way to transport things is just in a good old fashioned drawstring backpack, complete with my favorite Pokemon pinned onto it. These are great because they can be folded up, placed under your chair, and out of the way. Sometimes at tournaments and league it can get a little crowded in some uh, 
some places. So you want to make sure to bring something small that holds everything you need, but can also be put out of the way if you don't need it. Moving on to things that maybe you don't need and maybe you don't have to have, but are just kind of nice to have things. The number one nice to have thing is actually something that a lot of people already have, and that is a Pokemon binder. I prefer the type of Pokemon binder that has a zipper all the way around because that keeps your cards in just in case they were to fall out. I also prefer this style that has what's called side loading pockets because they are big enough to hold my cards while they're still on the sleeve so my cards are protected but they can still be displayed in my book. Another nice to have, and some people would even say this is a this is a must have, is a playmat. A playmat is basically kind of like a large, oversized mouse pad. And what this does is this again helps you protect your cards. It's a barrier between the table and your cards. It's also kind of a nice playing surface. It gives you. Um, I like the ones that have where your cards go on it, just as kind of a visual reminder of how many I have on my bench, where my deck and my discard pile are at. And again, we'll get into all that in a later video. But these are uh, these are actually really, really nice to have. And if you're going to have a mat, it doesn't hurt to have some kind of case or carrier to put your mat in. And the last thing that I consider kind of a nice to have are bulk storage boxes. You're going to find yourself with a lot more Pokemon than you can put into one deck. So I prefer these nice plastic ones. They also come in kind of a leatherette. You can also use, there's a cardboard version of this that you can use. But all these are just big bulk boxes. A lot of times they have dividers in them to divide types or whatever it may be. And just a way to store your bulk Pokemon when you're not using them or don't have them actively in a deck. Now there are also a couple luxury items that you can have. Again, this isn't something you ever need, but I consider them consider them luxury. The first one would be something like a, a metal or a custom, um, you know, maybe a custom acrylic or something GX counter. These are really, really nice to have. It just says, you know, hey, I really, really care about this. You know, I like to have it. Another thing is numbered damage counters. These are really, really nice to have. And this right here, these actually come from tcevolutions.com. They make some really, really great. These are all metal damage counters and the uh, GX counter. They also have, I think, some ability markers and things like that that you can get. Again, these aren't things that you need, but it's just nice to have. I like these uh, in particular because they can show a lot of damage on just one dice so you don't have your Pokemon cards cluttered up with dice. You can also have things like a good luck charm, a token, or something like that on the corner of your play map. My son uses a, a little metal Batman figure, but just Something is a good luck charm. If you're going to do that, just remember that it needs to be something appropriate and not something so big that it obscures your play area. But that's it. That is absolutely everything you need in order to play the Pokemon trading card game. Tune into our next video and we will go over the basics of how to read a Pokemon card, what all those little symbols and numbers mean, and then we'll go from there. Thank you all and have a great day.